I've read Long Longitude by Davos Obel, and this is about, as it says, the true story of a lone genius who solved the greatest scientific problem of his time. This is about a story about a guy called John Harrison who effectively solved the problem of longitude. So up until the 1700s, which is remarkable, um, we didn't really have a solution to knowing where we were around the world longitude while sailing. Latitude was fairly straightforward because you could just navigate by the stars and it was very straightforward to know where you were latitude-wise. So from north to south pole, uh, with how close to the equator or not you were. The But longitude was much more difficult. It wasn't, you weren't able to tell by the stars. And so they had various different systems that didn't really work that great, but they used to sort of estimate their speed and direction to try and work out roughly where they were. And it wasn't very accurate. And there was shipwrecks, there was delays, people got missed, got missed, got lost uh, en route and weren't quite sure where they were or how close they were to land or not close to land. Um, and that is how we navigated the world for a few thousand years until in the 1700s, John Harrison created a solution. Technologically, it's quite remarkable, but it's it's not necessarily the most innovative solution, but the way he manages to take a technology, which is clocks, um, and make them so much better uh, than what they were. The clocks used to lose minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes a day, and by changing um, mechanisms, making them out of different materials, he was able to live in that, you know, you know, and make them work on a ship where the temperature changes. If we're near the north, north or south pole, it's much colder, or it can be colder in, in winter. Um, or if we're on the equator, it can be much warmer, and metal expands and contracts. He, saw, he managed to solve that problem. Um, the rocking of a boat just normally, but then if you get into a storm, it's going to knock a pendulum out. It's going to throw works out of a clock and you know lose huge amounts of time or gain time. He figured it out. It's quite a remarkable individual. And he did it effectively solo as well. That's what's most remarkable. And he took a long time doing it, but he did it solo. And it's really fascinating to see how he's... But what's also amazing is there's actually two possible solutions. So one was this mechanical engineering solution by John Harrison, and the other was an astrono astronomical astronomical solution, uh, which is basically looking at the, the, the moon and, and um, the lunar solution of how the, the stars moved around the moon. And... Because the British government set up a prize, um, quite a large prize, to be won by anybody who solved this problem, um, uh, but they put in charge of the board effectively astronomers, or quite a few people on the board were astronomers, and obviously they favoured the astronomical solution over the mechanical engineering solution, and it took a long time and a lot of back and forth and a lot of um, conflict. Yeah, conflict conflict between different solutions and parties. So it was not just a story of the technology and the development and a hero getting there, it's also the story of um, him overcoming the obstacles of, you know, the the powerful elite not letting the, and as I think that was like a country bumpkin, get in. And I'm always rooting for a country bumpkin, coming from a, a rural farming family in the UK myself, I'm always rooting for my uh, uh, colleague, in arms, I suppose, even though it's a few hundred years earlier. But this is it's a great read. It's only a few hundred pages. It's a fascinating time in history. It's also interesting to think about how much impact this potentially had on the British Empire and the ships and dominating uh, that element of the world, dominating the seas of the world. How much advantage did we get from this? She doesn't really explore that hugely. She touches on it. But it's an interesting thing to think that basically an individual solved this problem and how much impact that potentially had on the British Empire and therefore the world. Really good read. Really fascinating. Well worth picking up. Doesn't take long. This also comes with in the special edition. It comes with little pictures of the the clocks he invented. Some of them are quite meticulously beautiful, and worth checking out. I need to go to Greenwich Observatory and actually see them in real life because that's where they are. So I have to get there at some point and have a look. But well worth your time if you get the opportunity. Longitude, Davos Oval, highly highly recommended.